Hi guys, I'm Darren, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about DJI and why there's so much fuss over their font. So a couple of days ago, Mads Tech released a video called DJI Goggles 2 and 03, do not buy, they just don't care. And I actually found this video really good, really refreshing, and you know, pretty truthful to be quite frank. But some of the comments that he got on that video were just, completely unfounded and complete rubbish to be honest there are a lot of understanding people a lot of supportive people which is great to see but a lot of people that just really don't get the issue so in this video i want to actually go through and show what the issue is so that it gives people a better understanding of the problem now i've never really been a supporter of dji and people may have got that about me from my previous videos it's not because they don't make good quality stuff it's because of the way they treat their customers technical support might be good but they just don't listen to what their customers actually want and need and that's my biggest issue with them especially when much smaller companies like hd zero and walks now are actually pretty much nailing it in that department but forgetting the rivalry between other companies forgetting the whole fuck you dji don't buy their stuff because they don't care let's actually have a look at what the differences are in some of the comments there was one guy in particular who was like inav can just use beta flights font they're just doing this to cause drama in the community and actually it's completely the opposite and i will show you why in a second but what we're going to do now is bring up some screenshots and I'll show you exactly what's going on. Right, so before getting into the screenshots, let's talk about MSP DisplayPort, what it is and why this is causing issues. And to be quite honest, the fact is it shouldn't be causing issues now. I agree with Ian, in the past when it was first set up, there was a bit of discrepancy between firmwares, but at least for the last year or so, both implementations will work with each other. And this really happened when HD Zero came out. Betaflight had their implementation of MSP DisplayPort and with iNav 5.1, iNav had MSP DisplayPort as well, working in basically the same way as the Betaflight implementation. With iNav 6, the implementation was made even tighter, so that both are basically doing the same thing. So with regards to the firmware is actually talking to the, the goggles via the VTX, it's doing the same job. So there's no issue there between different firmwares. Now I'm assuming that RG Pilot is doing the same thing as well. I've not seen their code, so I don't know for sure, but I'd imagine it's all working exactly the same way. So there's no fragmentation between the different implementations of MSP DisplayPort. They all follow this API right here. And basically an API is just something that specifies the commands and expected results to the code writers. So if we look on here, we have MSP set OSD canvas. So these are all the commands that you can send. It, it tells you the command, the ID of a message, the different parameters within that command, how you can set them. All this is documented and the flight controller firmwares will all follow this API to actually send the commands to the VTX, which in turn sends it to the goggles or the VRX, which then adds the OSD. So at this point, no matter what firmware you're using, whether that's RG Pilot, iNav or Betaflight, they're all doing this the same. This is not an issue. If DJI understands MSP DisplayPort from Betaflight, it should also understand it from iNav or RG Pilot. Walksnail does, HD Zero does. So there's not actually a problem with the communication between the flight controller and the firmware. The problem comes from the implementation that the goggles manufacturer, in this case DJI, are choosing only to do half the work. So we have this API, which is the firmware talking to the VTX, and from then on, it's really down to the goggles manufacturers and their implementation of what they do with these commands in the goggles. And that is where DJI is letting everybody down. So let's bring up the screenshots now and take a look at that. Right, I'm gonna try and get them all on my display at once so I can talk to you in the camera, otherwise I'll have to do this in editing. Um, but this here on screen is the DJI O3 font. Now this might look like the Betaflight font, 
but it's actually not quite. So even though Betaflight is basically supported, there are things missing on this font. And because of DJI's limitations on their firmware, you can't upload your own fonts, which means these are the only characters that you can work with in the OSD. So what I'm gonna do now is let's bring up Betaflight as well if we can. Okay, so here we have the Betaflight font next to the DJI font. You can see here that there are 16 columns along and X columns down. And for the most part, they are the same. There are a few differences, like in the top row, about the fifth icon in from the right, you can see a cross, which doesn't appear in DJI's font. On DJI's font, also in row seven zero in column three, you can see a crosshair and then a blank character. So you can see it's not exactly the same. There are differences, but you can see 99% you know, of the font matches. So that's why people who are using Betaflight don't see any problems, but that's not the same for other firmwares. So let's take a look at the rest of them. So on the screen now, I've tried to get the fonts for the three main firmwares plus the DJI. And you can see straight away that there's a lot of differences. Now, this here is the RG Pilot font. And if you look at it, it is very, very similar to Betaflight. There's a few differences around here, but for most of it, it's very similar. You can see it's got extra characters down here for the numbers with the decimal places. If you're using DJI 03 with iNav, you'll notice that there's actually quite a big character just for the decimal place that's because it has to take up a whole character space in analog hd0 walk snail on inav it will actually use these characters here same as on rg plane it would use these characters here so the decimal point is actually part of the number font so it doesn't take up any extra space so that's that's why these characters exist and we have others which is probably to do with artificial horizon i guess and there's some for wind speed, ground speed, all that sort of stuff that doesn't appear in the Betaflight font or in the DJI font, which is more important. So you can see RG Pilot and Betaflight is very similar. And RG Pilot have been doing like a Betaflight compatibility mode for quite a while, which is what they've been using with DJI 03. If we look at iNav, you will see that the font compared to the others is basically twice the size. We have a lot more elements. They're not all in the same positions. There's just much more data. So we have stuff like wind speed, we have ground speed, we have glide slope, we have all sorts of other useful information that just does not exist in Betaflight and some of it that doesn't even exist in RG Pilot. So we have switch position indicators, we have temperatures, we have lots and lots of icons. And the problem is we can't get everything, well, nowhere near everything out of just this information here. HDOP, for example, is something that's really useful for GPS reliability. This stuff just does not exist in DJI. To answer the whole iNav are just causing drama, they could use Betaflight's font, we do. We have been forced to mess around with our code and add a load of junk that we shouldn't need to just to have a Betaflight compatibility mode. So we do basically use whatever characters we can to give as many OSD elements as we can. Anything that we can't actually match up is just using a question mark because the font character just doesn't exist, it won't work. But this is severely reducing the functionality of the OSD. And the annoying thing is it doesn't need to happen. All DJI need to do is allow users to upload a font to their goggles and select which firmware they're using. They could even automatically select which firmware is being used from MSP, which is the way that Walksnell and HD0 are working. So it is a DJI issue. They are the ones causing this problem. And I hope that this video sort of shows what the issue is and how it's not just people causing drama. In fact, we've had to bend over backwards to try and support the customers that DJI should be supporting themselves with their own product. The thing that I hate most about DJI 
is that they are happy to do this. And this is why I 100% agree with Ian and say, do not buy their stuff. They don't care about you. If they did, they would allow you to upload the correct font for your firmware and get full functionality from their system. They don't, they are not interested. It takes a group like what the fuck to come in and hack their goggles to make them work properly. That's what happened with the old system. Whether or not it will happen with goggles 2 and 03, who knows. But that's what had to happen with the old system for it to work properly. Before, you were again limited to these characters. You had a very limited OSD and it was just junk, to be quite honest. Once it was hacked by WTF, then all of a sudden it was really, really good for the customers of DJI. They had a fantastic OSD, great picture and they had the best of all worlds. Unfortunately, with O3, they've gone back to the same old rubbish and are just not supporting their customers. I get why beta flight pilots don't understand what the issue is. They just simply don't use enough of the OSD to know what the problem is. People will say, beta flight's working fine, I'll get the OSD I want, what's the problem? The problem is you're not thinking about other craft. Beta flight is basically for quads. In the OSD of a quad, you really don't have much information. In my quads, I don't have a lot of stuff on the OSD at all. So actually noticing that there's stuff missing or it's inadequate, a quad is basically the lowest common denominator. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I just mean that in the way that with a quad, you hardly have anything on your OSD. So for having some barometer of how complete an OSD is, a quadcopter is not the way to go about it. It's not INAV causing drama. It's not RG Pilot causing drama. And if you haven't heard of either of those two firmwares, maybe you're in too much of a bubble to get why it's such an important problem. I don't really mean to disrespect any people, but I'm just saying there is a whole world of FPV out there and quad pilots are just a part of it. There's plenty of other pilots out there using different systems who do need more. And why should those pilots go without just because some corporate just can't be bothered? But I hope this video proves that it's not any firmware that's causing the issues. In fact, we're doing everything we can to try and support the pilots using our firmware who are also using DJI 03. If DJI got off their lazy asses listened to the community and implemented font uploads, they could have a fully featured OSD and do whatever they want with it. Until DJI sort of wake up, smell the coffee and actually do something decent, I'm moving in, don't buy their stuff, fuck DJI.